than we hear. Good evening, everyone. Today is another special day for us here in Southern California because we got the extra 300 3D, the 1.3 meter. And probably the person in the country to get it, but that's okay. Anyway, the extra 300 3D, a lot of people have said it's just a remake of another model. Well, that might be a little true. Well, here's the, the old Park Zone 300. And uh, there's been FMS 300s. There's been a lot of different ones. Um, one of the things that Horizon Hobby has gotten a lot of flack for on this one is that they just used somebody else's model, rebranded it. It's not quite that simple. So first off, this model was built by another company that uh, eFlight and Horizon Hobby acquired. So what they did was they took this, it was already a good model, and they did some improvements on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox this thing and take a look at some of those improvements. So let's get after it. So one thing I did wanna say, I didn't get this one directly from Horizon Hobbies. I actually got this from my local hobby store, uh, Pegasus Hobbies in Montclair. Tony and Stan over there, hooked me up made sure i was the first one to get one <laughs> so here we are uh by the way uh 279 uh it's 279 for the bind and fly 249 for the plug and play and uh the bind and fly comes with safe as3x panic mode all the good stuff so if any of you watched my last unboxing that box did not survive so this one's going to Slide this one out. There she is. As usual, E Flight, excellent packaging. Uh, I don't really look to see any damage anywhere. It all looks good from the top. Very cool. Well, as you can see, it's, uh, it's actually a pretty good sized model. Let's get ripping in here. Now, if any of you have ever flown any of the 300, you know that they have a very good tendency to be a very, very stable aircraft. Now, most of the models that were made were not 3D versions like this one. One of the things, let's go ahead and pull this out. First thing out of the box is left wing. Now, they actually did something a little different. They actually painted part of the foam on this, which I'm not really used to seeing any flight do that, um, but this is actually painted. Obviously raw foam over here, and then a decal, it appears to be a decal across this side. Very cool. And then of course the extra decal, but real bright colors on the bottom. And again, they're using more paint on these than I expected. It's more uh, like another manufacturer's model that I've seen. Um, Metal Gear servos. 23 gram metal gears, pretty stout servos, but good size ailerons on these uh, in comparison to models from earlier that we've seen. So there's that. Here's one for you, a 13 by six wood prop. Wood, it's not plastic, it's really wood. <laughs> Wonder how long that's gonna last. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, all right, we got that part out. Here comes the other wing. Very much the same. Good bright graphics on the bottom. Be very easy to identify it. Um, and it looks like 
got pretty pretty long spar tubes in here. And here's the uh, main spar. It looks like they go in pretty far. That's a really tight fit too. Nice. So one thing on the 300s that I've always enjoyed and very much like the uh, 540s, um, they use a symmetrical aileron. Uh, by that, I mean that it's not smaller on one end and larger on the other. What that does is it gives you even control all the way across the wing surface. Um, and a lot of, I want to, I want to say a lot of the five forties, um, they have a tendency to get into a tip stall, uh, really bad because of the narrow aileron at the, at the tip. Um, with the 300, I expect that this is going to have real good control for you at very slow speed, which it's a 3d model. So it should. So that is the other wing. Now it does look like there is a bit of assembly to do. Uh, rudder, we'll have to see if that's a glue in. I'm not actually positive yet, but uh, rudder control surface is very large, but it's got three hinged plastic hinges and those three appear to be glue ins. And of course the control, uh, ball link controls molded into the uh, rudder surface here. Pretty good size rudder. Now, what else we got here? Uh, landing gear. This landing gear is, if any of you have FMS models, is rem reminiscent of the FMS uh, models, just a really, really stout landing gear. This is really what they should have put on the timber, I think. <laughs> it's a pretty heavy duty. Um, it'll take a pretty good hit. It's got plastic wheel pants and plastic uh, arm covers. Um, if you fly in grass, uh, like I do a lot, you're going to end up taking the wheel pants off. But pretty cool looking. But they're very stout. I mean, these are yeah, these are pretty stout. The wire is pretty thick, so um, it'll stand up to some abuse. Pretty decent rubber tires. I'm not even going to say those are foam. Those actually look like they're rubber. So. Be pretty good landing gear there. Move that off to the side. Elevator. This is the big difference hundreds previous models to this. The stabilizer is extremely small if you look, but look at the size of this. Look at the size of that elevator. Um, they definitely went the 3D direction with this. The huge control surfaces should make this a lot of fun to fly. Um, one of the things that they did say about this is that the reason that they went to this market with this airplane is because this airplane was very versatile to begin with. So they made a few changes and this is what they came up with. And we're all pretty excited about seeing this one. I know a lot of guys wonder if this will be a stable aerobatic plane and not necessarily 3D. Um, from what I have heard from all the test pilots, they're saying that this is a great performing aerobatic airplane and you can fly 3D with. So this will be pretty exciting. Got a bag of goodies, screws, control horns, uh, I'm sorry, control links. And uh, yeah, it looks like a bind plug and a Y harness. And it looks like maybe the landing gear plate here on the bottom. Um, this one's gonna be too big to be a belly lander. <laughs> and besides that, it's a beautiful airplane. So landing gear is definitely going to go on. Um, this will be for the tail. And uh, we'll be assembling this later on, but a carbon uh, carbon fiber spar uh, for both the both wings. Now, the big dog. Now, some of the things about the improvements on here are that you can fly this on 3 and 4S without having to change the prop. Um, the reason that they did this, much like with on the Timber 1.2, um, they did that, uh, I want to say the guy's name is Brian Wright, I might be mistaken, but uh, Brian Wright uh, rewired uh, the motor to be able to fly on both 3 and 4S, and what they came out with was a good, just a good all-around motor that will fly with both. Uh, one of the things that 
has been, uh, sorry, uh, one of the things that has been discussed with the Timber One Point, the Timber X, is that if you want that perfect performance out of your four cell, uh, you'll probably want to change the crop. Um, efficiency on the three cell with the 1.2 timber, really good. Uh, but it does, under hard aerobatics, it does have a tendency to draw a little bit um, because of that middle of the road crop that they have on it. In the uh, corner here, got your spinner, classic spinner. Bright orange, goes with the color scheme. With a wood prop, I still can't get over that. And here she comes. Look at that beauty. Isn't that thing gorgeous? I think it is. I know you guys are like thinking I'm geeking out, but truth of the matter is I dig it. I think it's a cool looking airplane. I was very excited to see it come. Down here, stuffed in the corner of the pocket. This is one thing that try to get the instructions out without destroying them. Or destroying the box. We'll work on that here in a second. <laughs> it is way down there. Oh, that's what this is for. I'm not kidding. This thing is in there. You can't get it out. Oh, there it is. Wow, they shoved that book in there. All right, so here's our instruction manual. Put it together, bind it, and fly it. That's what it says. <laughs> All right, let's double check the box, make sure we haven't forgotten anything. Oh, looks like we got everything this time. Excellent. And all the boxes live. All right. I'm excited. All right, so the fuselage, obviously a little tiny rudder um, control surface. As you can see, massive throws. So there's going to be a little bit of assembly on this. Um, it's a mid-wing, obviously. Here is your battery hatch. Wonder how long it's going to be before that gets lost. Um, got plenty of room in here for, I'd say probably a 3,000, maybe a 3,200 four cell. Um, not a battery, it's not a removable battery tray like some people have been asking for, still hasn't happened. But uh, the uh, battery straps got twin battery straps, much like most of the other E flight models. And uh, of course, it's got the EC3 connector, which is going to be rapidly changed out for an XT60. Guys, just go to an XT60, it'll be a lot easier for everybody. <laughs> and Tail wheel, again, Metal Gear servos. You got one on each side, real short control rods. So, the slot for the landing gear on the, here on the bottom. And down here, you don't have to pull the canopy off, thank God, to get to the AS3X uh, receiver here. Um, the one question I had and never really got answered, which I'll figure it out. Um, obviously, with the uh, 636K, it is uh, programmed for uh, this air airplane. Um, but there are certain things that you want to add to it. Like if you want to do a flap setting or you want to do a split flap setting here, I'm sorry, do a, a, a split setting on your ailerons. Uh, should be able to be done program-wise, but I see that they kind of wants you to use a Y connector on here. Um, we'll see about that. We'll get that figured out. Um, got the exhaust stacks, much like the FMS model that it was kind of copied off of. And uh, got Pilot Bob in there. <laughs> but one of the other things that I thought was kind of cool was that they kind of went along with the FMS scale and did a printed dashboard with instruments on it. Um, pretty cool looking, pretty clean looking. But uh, up front is this new rewound monster. And I believe, I was told that this is basically a rewired Power 15 um, to run three and four cells. It's a much bigger motor than most of the others. So that is that part. But it's nice that they compartmentalize this so that you don't have to tear the canopy off 
which is pretty fragile on its own. But the finish, nice painted finish, very pleased with the way it looks. Again, they, they did a pretty good job on this. I know it's a remake, and I know a lot of people are saying it, but I think it came out pretty good. So I'm gonna get this thing together, and hopefully if the weather will uh, allow, we might be able to maiden this tomorrow. So real quick, we're going to uh, <laughs> Real quick, we're going to uh, slide a couple of these components together so that we can get a little bit better idea of what this thing's going to look like. Now, if any of you have seen the video uh, that they put out, that uh, Horizon Hobby put out, um, you see this thing had a very wide light envelope, which was very, very cool, and a lot of people are looking forward to that myself included. I'm not a great 3D pilot at all, but I love flying aerobatics and this just fits the bill. So let's, I'm not going to plug everything in right now. I'm just going to slide it together. Center tube, like most all E-flight airplanes. Now these wings fit together like the old FNS model where they overlap each other and then screw in from the bottom, which makes it a super, super tight fit. As you can see, no slop in there at all. And it would actually take quite a bit of work to make slop, <laughs> like hitting the ground, something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and just slide this together real quick since we're all here. The two-piece stabilizer fits with the center locking system that they have where the two interlock on this big molded piece, plastic piece. So it gives it a lot of strength there. So we'll just slide this in. So like I'm seeing that the, there is a little bit of assembly work to do uh, with attaching the, the rudder itself. And so let's go ahead and slide this together. And this just locks together. You line them up, give it a push, and it's in. Now on the bottom, pretty good looking model, isn't it? Look at that thing. So on the bottom, you have all your screw points to screw the wings together and to secure the tail, oops, sorry about that, uh, to secure the uh, tail section here on the bottom, there's two screws, one on each side, and those screw through into locking, plastic locking mechanisms that they have there. So minus the rudder, this is her. Yep, so there is going to be some gluing that we're going to have to do to put the rudder together, to put the uh, tail together, which no big deal, a little foam safe CA, some kicker, and you're, you're ready. So on the control surfaces, I did want to point out that the control horns all have ball wings. So there is really no play in this at all. Very tight. Nice new servos, so they're they're not going to have a whole lot of play. I don't have this hooked up yet, but um, be pretty happy with these servos, I think. Now we're going to find out how the speed is in comparison to some of the higher dollar servos, but I have a feeling it's going to be pretty good. Now with this landing gear, and I've I've argued this a few times with a couple of my friends that you kind of really don't need the base plate if you're a decent landing pilot. Because once these things are in, they're pretty in there. So base plate's just basically a safety, safety factor, but there she is, guys. Unboxed in one piece. I'm gonna be putting this thing together uh, probably tonight. I got a few things to do. You can see this thing has a beautiful stand, uh, much like a lot of the 300s, but this one I'm pretty excited about. 
With the AS3X safe mode, uh, you'll be able to, to uh, tune it to your flying style. If you wanna do full 3D, probably shift the, uh, the center of gravity back just a little bit to take more advantage of the 3D flying. Um, for aerobatics, probably a little bit weight forward um, and the uh, AS3X up to very mild or off altogether. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. So stay tuned, we'll do a maiden flight as soon as we can get this thing together and get the weather that we're looking for. And uh, I'll uh, keep you apprised on how the uh, tail goes together. Some people are a little leery of having to glue these things together. Shouldn't be a big deal. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys and uh, appreciate it. If you like the video, give me a like and uh, subscribe, share it with your friends. And uh, thanks a lot, Pegasus Hobbies and Montclair. I appreciate you guys getting this for me so quickly. If you're in the Inland Empire area, swing by Pegasus Hobbies on uh, Moreno Avenue in Montclair. Swing in there, say hi to Tony, pick something up. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Have a good night.